there worshiping the Lord in this service. Hallelujah. Isaiah 55, one verse of Scripture. What's the first word? Ho. Ho, everyone that thirsteth. Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by, and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. I just want to read that again because it's an interesting uh, verse of Scripture. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye by. And eat, yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. And with the help of the Lord, I want to speak on this subject for a few moments this morning. Spiritual desire. Spiritual desire. You may be seated. I began to think... In preparation for this message this morning about sometimes how my day goes, how that I'll be working and uh, and I know some folks think that preachers only work one day a week, but I actually work two. And uh, sometimes when we're working and uh, I'm working, I might be here at the church, I might be studying, I might be making phone calls. I might be running around looking at building material for some project we're working on. I, I, a whole series of things, visiting somebody. But sometimes it feels like the list is long, and I, I, I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. I don't want to stop for lunch, and I want to just keep plowing ahead and see what I can get accomplished. But somewhere around 1.30 or 2 o'clock, I'm starving. Now, I'm using that term relatively. I get real hungry, and I tell myself I'm just going to eat a snack because, you know, it's 2 o'clock at 5.30 or 6. Uh, uh, my wife is going to have some food probably prepared, or maybe I will have helped her have some food prepared. But we're going to have dinner, and... Uh, you know, I don't want to, I, I want to be hungry when I get there, especially if she's the one that's cooked the whole dinner. But when I to tell myself I'm only going to eat a snack, the problem is I'm so hungry. And so the little half sub has to maybe have a combo or, or maybe I need a coffee afterwards and that triple chocolate fudge cookie and uh, but I tell myself it's okay because supper is for it's not for another three hours or four hours and I mean I'll be hungry again by then and uh, I get home and the food is placed there and it looks good it looks awesome and the problem is I'm not really that hungry and I don't know, you may think this is telling a lie, I'm not sure, but whatever. But I try to look hungry when I'm eating it. I, 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 try, to, I try to act hungry when I'm eating it. Amen. I try to be hungry. I tell myself to be hungry and, and I eat everything that's on the plate because I know that when you make an effort and you prepare a dinner, the worst thing is that people aren't hungry when they sit down to eat it. And, and, uh, but eventually, as I'm trying to eat like I'm hungry, but I'm not, my wife will say, when did you eat lunch? And I'll say, why? Because, and she'll say, because I can tell you're not hungry. I'll say, what do you mean? I ate everything on the plate. She says, yes, but I can tell by the way you're eating, you're not hungry. I don't know. Maybe I don't use a knife and fork ordinarily. I'm not sure. But you see, people don't eat the same when they're not hungry. 
You don't eat as much when you're not hungry. You don't eat as enthusiastically when you're not hungry. Amen. You don't act like you're enjoying the food the same way when you're hu not hungry. In fact, the, the truth is you're not enjoying the food the same way when you're not hungry. Amen. The verse of Scripture that we read is about spiritual hunger or spiritual desire. You can call it hunger or you can call it thirst or you can call it spiritual desire. But I'm here to tell you that the hunger for God is that inner appetite, that longing, that feeling of need, that you need to connect with God, that you need to be in his presence, that you need to have God in a more significant way than he is right now in your life. That is a spiritual hunger. That is a spiritual desire. And I believe today that spiritual desire is highly valued by the Lord. I believe that the Lord is looking for a spiritual desire in the lives and in the hearts of his people. I believe that God is, a, is attracted to a spiritual desire inside of us. I believe he responds to a spiritual desire when he finds it inside of his people. I believe today that perhaps, as I thought about this, uh, this may be a very strong statement, but I believe that perhaps uh, that spiritual desire may be the determining factor for what happens spiritually in your life. When you worship, it will be the determining factor as to whether you go into the presence of God when you're worshiping or whether you just go through the motions. I believe that when you pray, that it is spiritual hunger that is present in your praying that determines often whether or not you are going to receive the answer that you are desiring. Amen. I think it was the the Apostle James that said, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What he was meaning is that the passionate, the red hot, the heartfelt prayer of a righteous person makes tremendous power available. Why? Because God responds and God reacts to the hunger that he finds in the hearts of his people. Amen. Hallelujah. It's sometimes hunger is what will affect the spiritual things in your life. It, it affects how you go about everything that's spiritual in your life. How you worship will be determined by your spiritual hunger. Amen. How you pray, how you sing, how you react in the church house will determine your, by, be determined by your spiritual hunger. In fact, even how you come to church. What do you mean? You mean when I come through the door, I'll have a, maybe a big spring in my step or something because I'm so hungry for the Lord? No. Let me tell you something about hungry people. They're never late for church. You know why? Because I know a little bit about hunger, and you don't want to miss a single morsel, and so you come for it all. You don't show up for a snack. Hey, man, spiritual hunger will affect absolutely everything that you do and how you do spiritual things in your life. Hallelujah. Hey, man, I, I wonder why bother? Why bother to do this whole thing called church? Hey, man, if we're gonna, not going to make it work, why bother praying? if we're not going to get answers? Why go through the effort of getting dressed and coming in the morning to Sunday church if we're going to walk back out the door the same way we came? I say let's get hungry for God in this house. I say let's put our heart into this. Let's get hungry for the Lord and let's react to the Word and to the presence of God with hunger and God will react to you when he sees hunger inside your life. Hallelujah. In our text in Isaiah 55, verse 1, 
it starts with the word ho. Ho. And that word ho is not like Santa Claus's ho. It's like the word hey. It's a shout out. It is an attention getter. It is the spirit of, of the Lord speaking to the prophet and telling him to say this from God. Hey, everybody. Listen, everybody. Can I have your attention, everybody? Hey, man, he's shouting out. And then he begins to talk about water and wine and milk. He says, everyone that is thirst come to the waters. And he that hath no money come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Amen. The water is a staple of the desert land. If you had water, you had everything you needed for life. You could support your family, your crops. You could support your flocks. And most importantly, you could support your own life because water is that basic element for supporting life. Wine is the recreational drink and the drink of celebration. When somebody wanted joy in the Bible lands or they wanted celebration in in the Bible lands. They would bring out the wine and they would drink the wine. Milk was the drink of nourishment or health, strength, and growth. Amen. These are all spiritual pictures of the refreshing, joyful, nourishing presence of the Lord when you have him in your life. His spirit is water to your souls and it gives you life and supports your life. Amen. His spirit is wine in your soul. It makes your heart glad and it makes your spirit happy. Amen. The milk is spiritual strength and nourishment to your bones spiritually. It nourishes your soul and it strengthens your life. But I want you to notice what he says. He gives us a very unique analogy. He says, come buy. He, he's talking about a purchase. He says, come buy this wine. Come buy this milk. Come buy this water. Amen. But there doesn't, it doesn't have a price tag on it. You can't buy it with money. So how do you buy it? What is the currency exchange if you want the milk, if you want the wine, if you want the water? How do I buy it if I don't buy it with money? I believe it's found in the first line. The currency of exchange for obtaining the things of God is spiritual thirst, spiritual hunger, spiritual desire. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want it, you got to be hungry for it. If you want it, you got to be thirsty for it. If you want it, you got to have a desire for it. Hallelujah. Every student of the Bible, anybody who's been around the Bible very long knows that the Bible talks a lot about being hungry for God. It talks a lot about being spiritually desirous for God. Amen. It's a big thing. It's an important thing to God. For instance, uh, hey man, on the Sermon of the Mount, and, and, and uh, that's one of the most famous sermons that Jesus gave. And he, he was going to feed the 5,000, but before he sat them all down and he began to give them all these different blessings that would be upon different spiritual qualities in their life. For instance, he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, uh, for theirs is the kingdom of God. He also said, Blessed are they who do mourn, for they shall be comforted. But the fifth criteria and the fifth blessing that he gave is found in Matthew 5, verse 6, when he said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It's not just talking about 
being hungry to be a better person. It's not just talking about being hungry, hey man, so that you can be a more respectful person. He's talking really about being filled with God. The power of righteousness. The power to impute to your account righteousness. He's talking about the power to be changed into his image and made righteous. He's hungry. He's talking really about being hungry hungry for God himself and he says he who is hungry and is thirsty after righteousness shall be filled why because there is something that God is attracted to he's attracted to hunger and thirst for his presence when Jesus was at the feast I don't know if this was the first or the second year but when he was at the feast the, the Passover, he celebrated three of them, and the third one he celebrated by hanging on the cross. But on one of these, in John 7, verse 37 through 39, it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst. He stood and cried, saying, He did exactly what his spirit did back in Isaiah 55. He hollered, hey. He hollered for the attention. He hollered for everyone to listen. He hollered for everyone that was interested and that would give him their attention. He cried out and said, if any man thirst, let him come on to me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures has said, out of his belly, out of his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. When he says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink, he was talking about the Holy Spirit. He was talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. He was talking about that righteousness that fills us from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he was trying to let us know that it's for the thirsty. He was trying to let us no, if you're thirsty, there is something for you. If you're hungry, there's something for you. If you're desirous for God, he's not going to ignore you. You can come to church and you cannot be hungry and you'll go back out the same way that you came. You can come into God's presence and have no spiritual desire and nothing will be transferred from God to you. You will just go home. You'll say it was great music. The preacher sure spit a lot. Hey Amen. But ultimately, hey man, it was just one of those services. While the hungry in the church, they go home transformed. The hungry in the church go home with a changed life. There was a transfer from God to them. Why? Because they were hungry. Hallelujah. I know this is not a deep subject. Hunger is a pretty basic subject. Spiritual hunger is a pretty basic subject. But you know what? All the fancy doctrines and all the, all the incredible teaching about this subject or that, uh, describing the oneness, describing what uh, the, the, the horsemen are in the book of Revelation, describing uh, well, how we can recognize 666. Uh, amen. Trying to understand some in the Greek somewhere in the book of Hebrews. All of that is not worth a hill of beans. It'll not do anything if there's no hunger in your life. It is hunger. It is thirst. It is a desire for God. It is a passion inside of you that says, I can't go home the way I came. I've got to have his blessing. I've got to have something from him or else I don't want to go home. I'll stay here as long as I have to but I need to have his touch in my life and that's what will bring heaven down that's what will open heaven up and pour his power into you it's spiritual hunger ha. hallelujah 
You see, hunger, the reason it's a big deal is because it'll do things to you that nothing else will. It'll produce an attitude and a response in you that nothing else can produce. It produces a certain response to the word. When someone is hungry and you preach the word, they want to do it right away. They want to do it in the very detail that it's described in the scriptures. They don't go home and say, you know, I think I'll just think about it. I'm just going to pray about this for a while and see if the Lord convicts me. I'm not really sure it's in the Bible, but maybe God's changed his mind. I'm not really sure, so... I'll just think about it for a while. No, when you're hungry, hey man, all the Lord has to do is give you a nod in a certain direction. All he's got to do is speak a single word and you're hungry. It's not that you're hungry to do this or you're hungry to do that. It's that you're hungry to have him. Oh, let me tell you, I'm so hungry for God right now. I'm so thirsty for the Lord right now. I know that if we have a thirst and a hunger... In our hearts as a church, everything is going to be all right. <clears throat> We're not going to stray from this book if we got hunger in our life. Why? Because hunger produces a, a certain response to the word. But let somebody be a little cool, too cool for Jesus, and too cool for his word, and they have a different response than the hungry. There's a certain response by hungry people to the presence of God and to the knowledge of the presence of God. Amen. They become emotional. They become passionate. They become fired up. Amen. They become stirred inside them when they get in the presence of God. Amen. Their emotions become raw and they become they become excited they become passionate hey amen why because they're hungry for god and they can feel him and they know that he's not very far from where they're at he's close to where they are and so they want to get into his presence they want to hunger hey amen let me tell you they don't rush away they don't they don't do this little two minutes with jesus and then roll back to their seat and wait for the service to get over no that's for the people who aren't hungry let me tell you, putting it in the natural, I've been with some of you people when we went to the King's Buffet. Hey Amen. You didn't go up there and pick around and eat a couple of little pieces of green lettuce and, and maybe a meatball. Hey Amen. Scarf that back and head out to your car. No, you lingered long. You went back again and again. You took more than what you could even consume. Why? Because you were passionate about eating. Let me tell you, hey Amen. I know that may be exciting when we talk about food but we are in the presence of the Lord we have come into his presence we have come into his presence he's here in the house and if we're hungry it will cause us to respond to him in a certain way hallelujah hallelujah it produces the deepest commitments in the hungry Amen. They don't negotiate so they can try to hang on to their favorite little sin. Their hunger drives them deep. It drives them a long ways into their commitment with God. Amen. Give me a person careless about how they serve God and I'll show you a person that's not hungry for God. I'll show you a person that's not hungry for the Lord. If they just are making excuses and finding little ways how they can just kind of go through with their own sins, I'll show you somebody that's not hungry, but show me someone who's hungry. Hey Amen. They're, they're always struggling with guilt. Let me tell you, hungry people are always struggling with a guilty conscience. Hey Amen. Not the, not the sinners and that, uh, that are careless. They don't have a guilty conscience, but those 
who are hungry for God, they always have a guilty conscience. Why? Because their hunger is always demanding more of them than what they can actually deliver in their spiritual maturity. So they always think they ought to pray more or they ought to fast more. Or if they make a small little mistake along the way, they're so convicted. They become weepy. They become brokenhearted. Why? Because they're hungry to be right with God. They're hungry to be in God's presence and have his approval. Hunger drives people farther than anything else in their lives. Can I tell you something else about the, the hungry? Non-hungry people don't get the hungry. They don't understand the hungry. <laughs> they, they, they don't appreciate the hungry. Here's an example in the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 36, and it says, And one of the Pharisees desired him, that's Jesus, that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house. This is a religious man. And he sat down to meet. And behold, a woman of the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. The alabaster box automatically meant that it was a very expensive and precious spikenard ointment. And the Bible says, as she stood at his feet behind him, weeping, began to wash his feet with her tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with ointment. Now when the Pharisee, the religious man, the man that went to church every day, the man who prayed on the street and fasted twice a week, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner." And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say to thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore which of them will love the most. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And, and he said unto him, thou hast judged rightly. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon. Look at what he said. He turned to the woman. He's looking at her. She's still at his feet. She's still putting the ointment on his feet. And he begins to talk to his religious guest. And he says to Simon, Seize thou this woman. I entered thine house. Thou gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with, uh, with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth much. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. What are you saying? I'm saying this woman's desire and this woman's hunger caused her to go to an extreme. Let me tell you, the, the hungry get a little fanatical at times. Sometimes they give too much. Sometimes they go too far. Sometimes they sacrifice beyond what would be expected. Amen. Amen. But God who looks at that says it's because they have great hunger and they have great desire. And so he blesses them. But the non-hungry don't get the hungry. Why? Because they always think it's too much. They're given.
been too much. This is too much to ask. This is too big of a, of a commitment. This is too far to go. But if you're hungry, if you're thirsty, you'll do whatever you need to do. You'll do whatever has to be done in order to get into the presence of the Lord and feel right with God in your spirit. Hallelujah. If our musicians could come. I'm preaching about hunger because I'm hoping I'm hoping somebody will get hungry. When Adam preached that message last Sunday night, I felt something break inside me. All I wanted to do was pray for myself. And I wanted to pray for my relationship and my connection with God. Not that I'm not walking with God, but it made me so hungry. It made me so thirsty. I want to have him. I want to have him in my life. That's, that's what I'm hoping I'll stir with the help of God's spirit and his anointing. I'm hoping it will stir something inside of us. Why? Because God can tell by the way we eat whether we're hungry. He can tell if we've been snacking on the world. He can tell if we're just not hungry the way that we should. Yes, we're here. You say, Pastor, I'm here. What's the matter with that? But he can tell by the way we come into the house of the Lord whether we're hungry. I'm singing, Pastor, what more do you want? But Jesus can tell by the way we sing whether we're hungry or not. When we clap, isn't that how we worship? Yes, but when you're hungry, you clap a certain way I'm not saying I can tell I'm not saying I'm judging anyone's hunger I'm judging my own sometimes gee when we're hungry we're not very happy when we're hungry we're not happy because we want to be in his presence a couple weeks ago, I was kind of real grumpy with my wife. And you know me, I'm not normally grumpy. <laughs> but I was grumpy. It seemed like I wasn't happy with any conversation. She said, Why are you so grumpy? I said, I'm sorry, I am grumpy. But I was grumpy because I was hungry to be in God's presence. And it just felt like it had been a while since I'd been there. It felt like it was a while since I soaked in the glory of the Lord where it was just me and Jesus and I didn't care about anything. You could take everything I have. You could take my very life. I didn't care. I'm soaking in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I was hungry for God. And I had to preach that message last Sunday night and something just, it broke inside me. And I'm still feeling it today. I'm hungry. Maybe I'm preaching only for me. Maybe this message is only applicable to me. Maybe I'm the only one that needs to be made to be hungry here in the house. I don't know, but I'm, I'm trying to pass this on. I, I've learned that if it's inside of me, chances are it's the same kind of thing that's inside of somebody else. And I'm just saying today that if you will hunger and if you will thirst, he'll respond to you. He'll respond and say, Pastor, I, I got a lot of things wrong with my life. You get hungry. He'll fix it. Don't wait until you fix it to get hungry. But you start to hunger. And the Lord will react and respond to that hunger. And he'll give you the strength to fix those things that you need to fix in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we all stand in the house? Say, preacher, how? 
how do I get hungry? If I'm not hungry or if I want to be hungry, or how do I get hungry? Well, that's simple. You see, whenever I get around food, I start getting hungry. A week ago, we went to a house and had a little Bible study. I'd had a nice dinner. I was hungry and I ate it all. But when I got over to the house and I saw Portuguese custard tarts, and I saw some kind of, I don't even know what it was, it was kind of, it was called a chocolate mousse cake. There was something else there. I wasn't hungry. In fact, I said to myself, I'm trying to work on my diet. And I'm not going to eat very much. And truth was, I wasn't even very hungry. But there's something that happens when you get around good food. What I'm saying here today is the thing that you need to do if you want to be hungry and you're not. You need to shut a few things off in your life. And you need to turn on something that's going to talk to you, sing to you about Jesus. You need not just stay in your spot, but when the music is playing, you step out of your little shell and you begin to respond and react because I've discovered if you get around you get around the Lord a little bit when you say I'm going to participate in the presence of the Lord I got to be honest with you I've come to a few services I haven't been that hungry for Jesus and I just decided I'm going to worship I'm not going to give in to the feeling but I'm going to worship and I found as I began to participate, as I began to re react, I began to respond, I began to worship, I began to interact with Jesus Christ. And, hey man, I didn't fold my arms and go, man, I sure hope this gets over because man, I'm just so tired and I'm kind of bored right now. But I begin to react. I begin to respond. I begin to interact. And I found out that when I begin to get around the presence of the Lord and I begin to shut off the voice of the world and I begin to allow the voice of God to speak in my life, I start getting hungry. And when I start getting hungry and I start responding and reaching, it's not very long before I feel something filling me and flowing in me, the Spirit of God and the presence of God. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to you in these few moments that I've had. I preached 37 minutes and 58 seconds. And we're going to open this altar for someone who feels touched by the Word you want to be hungry. I'm asking you to come and as we sing and as we worship, if you'll just begin to respond to Jesus Christ and let him move upon you. And we'll just see what will happen in the next 10 or 12 minutes in this altar as we respond to Jesus Christ. Could we do that? Could we worship? This altar is open if you'd like to come as they sing.